Hey everyone, it's Kerry Kay. Today's conversation is about reptilians. And I know, I just know it. There's going to be some people who go, oh, what is Kerry doing? You know, talking about reptilians. That's not a conversation conducive to love. It's not a conversation conducive to harmony. We shouldn't talk about these things. Ha! Huh. From the get-go, if, if this is a topic that could be triggering to you or not interesting to you or somewhere somehow not in service to you then turn it off now it doesn't have to be in your highest good to listen to this video for those of you who have been attracted to listen to a conversation about reptilians the true earth history and your personal truth this video is for you but if there's something in this topic that feels triggering i want you to honor yourself always 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 honor yourself there are so many videos on my channel and on other people's channels go to what calls you not to what doesn't i want this to be of real benefit not just real interest but real benefit to those of you that listen because there's no point giving you information for the sake of information it has to grow you it has to evolve you in some way and that's my intention here the Galactics prompted me some weeks ago to share a conversation with you about the reptilians. It was after an interaction I'd had with them. It was pretty hair raising. I didn't enjoy it. And I was left rattled, to be honest, for a couple of weeks after. So the conversation was not one that I really wanted to have. Uh, and yet, yet, <laughs> the Galactics haven't stopped tapping me on my shoulder. Hey, Kerry, you know, we need to... We need to put this up. We need to share this conversation with humanity. If I were to give you a reason why, like why is this important to humanity right now? I would say to you this, we are finally evolving beyond the control. Finally, we are evolving beyond those that once controlled our planet. And when we do that, it's kind of helpful to look at where we were. It's helpful to look at the level of control we were under and what we are breaking free into. So it's a case of, well, if I'm not under that control anymore, if the planet and me as the individual, if we're no longer under reptilian control, then under whose control are we? Hmm. Well, let's have this conversation and let me know in the comment section. I'd be really interested to hear how this lands with you and what this conversation does for you, starting off with reptilians. Reptilians, first of all, <laughs> they've got a very bad rap with uh, some very good reasons, but like all species, they cannot all be bad. They simply cannot be. It's kind of like saying, oh, you know, all South Africans are like this. All Spanish people are like that. All Americans are like this. No, some of them are, but some of them aren't. So there's always the exception. I'm obviously talking about reptilians in general. And I'm not going to be talking about the exception, but I want you to know that they most certainly are benevolent reptilians. Reptilians did not originate in our galaxy. They didn't even originate in our universe. Reptilians originated outside of the original creation templates. So what that means is that they're not God source creator made. But that's okay. A lot of things that we have in our reality right now are not necessarily directly made by God source creator. The reptilians is one of them. So the reptilians is a group of beings, a species of beings created almost to be what humanity is not. They're created by a group of beings called the Archons. The Archons are also known as the Fallen Ones. There's a whole other conversation we can go into uh, when we talk about the Archons. But for right now, let's stay with the reptilians. So they're created to be everything that humanity is not. The reason that they're created to, to be what humanity is not is to further a dark agenda. Because humanity, let's start here. Let's start with humanity's true story. And when I say humanity, I'm talking about us, the earth human. No, we're not the only humans in the cosmos. But right now, this is the humanity that I'm referring to. Earth human is an amazing conglomeration of so many different species. Reptilian DNA, definitely we've got some. Angelic DNA, definitely we've got some. 
Syrian and Pleiadian and Arcturian and so many contributors were a part of this hybridized mishmash of creation that the humans of planet Earth are. But I know that you're going to ask the question, why? You know, why, why was the original human design tampered with? It's a good question. Earth humans were created as part experiment and part slave species. A slave species in order to do the work, to do the bidding of those who had lost their creative power. Those who've lost their creative power are those who've gone against creation. Earth humans have creative power. We are creative beings. So we are very prized for this one thing that we have that separates us from the dark ones, from the malevolent forces. We have the ability to create because we are still directly connected to God's source consciousness. The idea, however, was to create a species capable of creation so they would still have this glorious ability to create reality, but to be almost shepherded, almost herded into a specific creation that served and I want to use this word, and I know it's a triggering word, that served the overlords, that served the dark forces that were at a time deeply controlling and manip manipulating humanity. So these dark forces that I speak of, yes, they're reptilians, but the reptilians themselves are a controlled species. So if we really go all the way up the chain, we're going to trace this all the way up to the Anunnaki, to the Arconic influences, which are the original fallen ones. To do the bidding, or in other words, to do the creating of the Dark Ones, meant that we as the human species couldn't know that that's what we were doing, because of course if we did, we would want to do the opposite. So the idea was to control humanity without humanity knowing that they were controlled. And mission successful. If you look at our planet, you look at the generations gone by, it's very much the story of planet Earth. It is not the story of today. It is not the story of current day humanity because current day humanity, for the most part, and I do mean that when I say it, I do mean it the most part. Believe it or not, most human beings hold an awareness that what they're being shown outside of them through the mainstream, what they're being shown is not necessarily truth. They're aware that there is hidden agendas. They're aware that there is something that doesn't make sense. That varies. So the degree of how much information people have varies person to person. But the majority of people are at some level aware something isn't quite right, not exactly sure what it is. There's a bigger agenda playing out right now. That alone, that alone is enough to upset the apple cart. Now, the reptilians are a group of beings that have long since been banished from Earth. However, there are many, many Earth humans who are very hybridized with the reptilian beings who very strongly serve the reptilian beings. In other words, they live in a body that's part human, part reptilian, looks mostly humanoid, acts mostly humanoid, but has the consciousness of the reptilians. So let's start there. What is that? What is the consciousness of a reptilian being? Remember, I said they're created to be what humanity is not. So they're created to be order takers. They're created to not individuate. They are created to be really a hive-minded structure where there's a very strong hierarchy. There are those at the top. There are those bottom rungs of that hierarchy, which are really just the, uh, the soldiers, the foot soldiers, so to speak, the ones who carry out orders. And that's very strongly embedded in the reptilian consciousness. They are there to serve the whole, being their reptilian uh, species. Their individual lives don't really matter. The, bene 
fitting and the furthering of the species is what matters. They're very controlled by dense emotions and very capable of feeling dense emotions. And by dense emotion, I mean anger and fear and rage and jealousy. They're not so capable of feeling higher emotions. So love, forgiveness, charity, compassion, etc. They can't tune in. They don't have access to that array. We have unbridled, un limited access to the entire emotional spectrum it's one of the things that sets humans apart humans are born to individuate humans have something some drive in them that causes them to ask no matter how controlled we've been humans keep asking the question who am i why am i here what is this life about that's the process of individuation that's where it begins it begins with questioning. So in other words, not so much order takers. Creators will question because creators want to know for themselves. Remember, the reptilians are not creative. They are not creators, but they're very, very good at manipulating reality for other species to get them to create on their behalf. So the human consciousness is interwoven with so much love. Because we are this conglomeration, because we are this mishmash of genetics, we can draw upon the God source consciousness creator stuff, the pure divinity. We can draw on that, but we were not designed to. So let me take you back to what created the earth human in the first place. This is a very fascinating story. Now I've said to you, the earth human is a um, kind of like a, melting pot of various other species created to be the creators to carry out the bidding without knowing that that's what they were doing now when the galactics and the angelics in other words the higher frequency benevolent beings of our cosmos when they saw this experiment taking place they said oh no this 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 does not seem just this does not seem fair but there were those beings who had elected to be part of the experiment. There were those beings who were conned into, manipulated into, saying, yeah, I'll be part of that experiment. So free will was in action. And the moment there is free will, whether it's benevolent or malevolent, the moment there is free will, it must be respected. These are the laws of our universe. So the galactics and the angelics couldn't intervene. But what they could do, is become a part of the experiment themselves. So they could insist, all right, if you guys are going to do this, if you're going to create this earth human species, then we want our genetics imparted within them as well. This was a very big spoke in the wheel. This was kind of like a flaw in the plan of this dark agenda. But the dark agenda is so manipulative. They said, okay, well, if the angelics and the higher frequency beings insist on having their genetic material becoming part of the earth human species what we'll do is we'll put it in because we have to our experiment won't proceed if we don't do this we'll put it in but we will make it almost impossible for humanity to access that higher frequency so we're going to bump bombard humanity with separation consciousness we're going to bombard humanity with ideas of hate and division and arguing and better than and insecurities and judgment and programming 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 that they'll never really be free of and therefore they'll never be able to access the higher frequency potential that they carry can you see how that hasn't quite worked out? Can you see how we, the star seeds, came in? Because we saw that plan and we said, aha, there's a loophole. We can come into these earth human bodies. And as we enter the earth human bodies, we can remember who we are inside the earth human body, thus catalyzing the awakening process and therefore liberating and freeing the earth human. Because here is the astounding Beautiful, magnificent, heartwarming, amazing thing. And it's this. As we remember who we are, all of the contributors towards our earth human genetic material, as we remember who we are and as we ascend, all of the contributors to whom we are karmically now connected 
and who are karmically connected to us, they begin to feel the ripple of our ascension. So there's an unintended consequence for the malevolent ones that they were too arrogant to see. And that is that we were going to ascend, that we were going to access our divinity, that we were destined to do this. Because God's source created a consciousness, even if it's the tiniest seed in the darkest universe, will always bloom, will always blossom. It will always become the radiant light, the iridescent, radiant light that it is. It will always do this. So the malevolent ones, the reptilians and numerous others, are suddenly wanting to distance themselves from this earth experiment. Uh-oh, this experiment's now out of control because the earth humans are awakening. We didn't think that this was possible. So now there's an impact on these hive-minded, hierarchy-orientated beings such as the reptilians. There's a for them, a negative impact. And the negative impact is, oh no, now we're going to ascend. We don't want that because for them, ascension is essentially the end of their species as they know it. Now, there are those beings within the reptilians, and I spoke about them in the beginning. There are those beings who've already begun that process. They are, in a sense, under what, and this is a very uh, earth human term, they are, in a sense, under what we would call a galactic witness protection program that's the best uh, most similar association that I can give you so there are those reptilians who have individuated are individuating are consciously returning themselves to source as we all are as well the whole however is still very vested in maintaining their structure and as they do this they've had to some time back already, they've had to leave our planet, but they left behind their technologies, they left behind the imprint of control, and they left behind their minions. The minions that I'm referring to are those beings who are highly um, hybridized to the reptilian DNA. They are very consciously aware of their role in the control. They very consciously see themselves as separate to humanity, although they're in an earth human body. They have a lot of reptilian DNA. They see themselves as superior. So in other words, they might have an earth human suit, but they really carry that consciousness of control, manipulation, and so forth. They've, in a sense, been abandoned here. They've, in a sense, been left behind here. So the minions are operating without a hierarchy because it is the hierarchy that's been pushed off the planet. And when I say pushed off the planet, partly voluntarily, because the ripple of our ascension was being felt by then, but partly through the insistence of the Galactic Federation, the benevolent ones who support humanity. So as these events unfolded, humanity was left with a very, very interesting set of circumstances. And that was, well, we're not under the direct control of the reptilians themselves. We just have the remnants now of control. We have the remnants of that programming that used to run through a particular part of our brain. There was a part of our brain designed to hold the programming of the reptilians. See, first of all, it was very clever having reptilian DNA meshed with our own because we needed to not recognize we needed to not see for the experiment to be successful we needed to not see those controllers because they kind of blended in they were in a sense familiar they needed within the human body a special part of the brain a particular part of the brain wherein they could run their programming now <laughs> due to Absolutely no coincidence. We call that part of the brain the reptilian brain. Among other things, the reptilian brain is the part of the brain through which the old programming was run. It was the part of the brain where entities, attachments, and programs were run. That part of the brain has, for the last couple of months, begun to upgrade. But it creates confusion. 
it creates a who am I now moment. You know, humanity, I've said this numerous times before, humanity has got a kind of a Stockholm syndrome. You know what Stockholm syndrome is, right? It's where beings fall in love with their oppressors, their captors, those who hold them hostage. It's a very famous incident uh, in Stockholm, after which this is named. And humanity's really got Stockholm Syndrome in the sense that humanity fell in love with being controlled. Humanity fell in love with the idea of having people of authority take care of everything. It meant that they didn't have to be responsible. It meant that somebody else was in charge. It meant that they were going to be able to redeem themselves, at least in their limited viewpoint, because they weren't going to be put on the line whereby they could make mistakes and be held accountable. They liked the idea of having others in charge. It was one of the big downfalls of humanity. So as this programming or this part of the brain where the programming was run through, as this begins to evolve, it leaves humanity with a who am I now, where am I now, what am I meant to be doing kind of a state. Because, of course, the truth is that we now must become our own authority. We now must become our own internal leader. We now must become the ones we revere, the ones we look up to. But we were so entangled in what we thought was a normal reality, whereby we were hero-worshipping celebrities or people of influence, billionaires. We were so into this idea that there were other people more worthy, more special, more amazing, more something than we were. We were so invested in the mere mortality or the not good enoughness of ourselves as the individual human that we couldn't envision ourselves taking this level of leadership, this level of responsibility. And that's the challenge that humanity faces when the reptilian control is gone, completely eradicated. Because remember, all we're left with are the minions. And humanity, you know, there I know that there are a lot of people who want humanity to round up the minions and punish them in some way. Believe it or not, that's probably not the answer. The answer is instead, instead of humanity fighting what is really a small group of beings who are essentially pretty powerless what is essential for humanity and, and, and really the most powerful thing for humanity to do right now is to become their own authority. Not to ask permission from somebody else. Can I please be the authority now to just be it? Can I please be sovereign now? No, just to be sovereign. Just to be the leader, to be the authority, not to fight for it, not to demand it, only to be the voice of authority that we as humanity came here to be. So when the reptilian control is gone, the human power must emerge. That's the point of this video. It's to support you in aligning yourself with that which is your own potential to self-lead, to see those places where we became trapped, to see those places where we, we became controlled and to rise above and beyond them. I do hope that this video supports you immensely. I love you deeply. Speak to me in the comments section. Subscribe. Love the video. Don't like it. Love it. If this is what has supported you, let me know in the comments and definitely pop a like onto that little notification bar because, of course, it helps YouTube know in the algorithm this is what they need to show to more people. Lots of love, everyone. Bye-bye for now.